In this week's video, we're talking about tripods, but in particular, my tripod, and what it is that I use for architecture and interior photography, especially for travel, but also just for a sturdy base to get good shots. Let's do this. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin, and this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK, and I love shooting abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems, and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. I'm posting new videos every Sunday, so why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing. You can also check out my website in the description below. So here I am with my Benro Mac 3 tripod. It's a six foot tripod, a uh, pretty standard height tripod, but it is unfortunately discontinued, so I can't link to it or give you any kind of other write up. They do other versions, newer versions of this tripod. It actually came out in 2016. So it's actually you know fairly old by this point, but I do look after it, although it does need a little bit of oil at the moment in some of the leg compartments. So Benro's names have always been slightly confusing. Here is the TMA38CL, the Mac 3 tripod, which replaced mine a couple of years later. Uh, it's a four section tripod, but a friend of mine bought this thinking it was mine after we went on a trip together. And uh, unfortunately it was much taller it's okay for him because he's a taller guy. If you're over six foot, it might work for you. But looking around on Benro's website, there's actually a carbon fiber option that's probably better. Six foot tripod by Enduro Classic, it says here, which Benro bought out Enduro a couple of years after I got my tripod. And it's at a similar price point and has really pretty much similar specifications. So I would say this is the one that has replaced mine these days. This is accompanied with a fairly new product for me, the Sunway Photo GH Pro 2, which you see here on top of it. It's just screwed on top. Um, it is a little bit damaged though, so please ignore any sort of warping you can see when I'm rolling the handles in this sort of discussion. And also as well, um, there's segments as you can see here that are moving around. I do need to get it repaired. I have contacted them. I've got to say, the, one of the reasons why I've not actually done so many reviews on this channel about this geared hedge yet, even though I've had people ask me about it, is because their customer service so far has been pretty appalling. Um, I've not been able to, even though it has a five-year warranty, get the part changed. What's the point of having a, a top of your tripod that has all of this movement? There's no point whatsoever. So yeah, this is the tripod. This is what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to start from the ground up and actually talk you through each element and what is only beneficial to me in architecture. There's other elements of this tripod. For example, you can take one leg off and turn it into a monopod. Um, you know, the center column into a monopod by taking this off like this. And um, that's not relevant to me in architecture, so we're not talking about it. I'm going to talk about each element that is just literally relevant to me in this video. And we're going to guide you through each stage building the tripod up to get the firmest base possible for interior shots. Okay, let's start at the ground then. The actual legs themselves, they are lock, twist, lock legs. Let's discuss those now. My tripod legs have certainly been put through their paces over the last six years, and they've come through this with flying colors. I love the twist locks on the legs and the tripod is a joy to set up and easy to use. The tripod legs do what they're designed to do, hold the camera and lens steady even in very windy or adverse conditions and trust me I've been in some adverse conditions during this period. There are dust dirt resistant collars on the legs to prevent the ingress of dirt and I like these a lot but of course it's not foolproof. Also the rubber twist locks are nice and chunky and easy to operate even when wearing gloves. I've always believed in using quality tripods, any savings being like a false economy, buy cheap, buy twice, so the saying goes, and that's what's happened to me in my tripod odyssey. As with all Benro products, the purchase of the legs come with a set of Allen keys and also some spike feet, but of course in architecture photography, I'm always using the rubber feet to stop the tripod slipping on tiled floors. Actually, mine are due to be changed, I've just ordered some new ones. There's also this rubber or foam grip on one of the legs. This is a grip for carrying, it helps to stop the legs from clashing when it's folded down. It also helps, of course, with carrying the legs in cold conditions. Architecture is certainly one genre of photography that can benefit a lot from a good tripod, especially if you're going to print large and want to get the most detail you can in your image. Then we have these Allen key screws here at the top of the legs and this flip out, this pull out lever to be able to extend the legs. Let's discuss those. 
you need to get the tightening correct on these. They are a standard size for a tripod and I use the Sunway Photo DW01 tool and this has all of the correct sizes for each of the tripod sections including the L bracket on the camera and these double sided screws. Uh, over time they do get a little bit loose so I do recommend always with a tripod having an Allen key or two, you need two, one for either side in your bag. So in my kit, in my photography kit, I do have uh, a spare couple of Allen keys to tighten these up as and when they do come loose. It hasn't happened for a while, so it's probably due to happen any time, but other than that, the legs are very sturdy. Uh, you know, all of the bottoms, they unscrew, they come off, they clean well, and uh, I do try and look after it. Like I said, at the minute, it does need a little bit of oiling to stop all of this stuff like creaking and um, so it runs a bit smoother. But other than that, the legs are solid and sturdy. The other thing to mention about the legs, they do have this pop-out section here, uh, so you can actually lift them into a more of an erect position, like so. There's actually three levels that you can adjust this then to, to get your camera into various positions. There's also a bubble level on top here, it stopped working and I wouldn't use it anyway. Pretty much the only thing of note to say about it. Um, so yeah, I don't use the bubble level on the tripod legs. The next thing is the centre column and this lovely blue twist lock we have here by Benro. Um, Fully extended, this tripod has the ability to be very sturdy, even with the centre column up. Let's discuss that now. As with all Benro tripods, it comes with a short centre column and a large centre column in the box. It does have a very solid blue screw to hold this column firm and I use it upright a lot. It has never let me down, it's super solid. I use this larger column all of the time and, and not the smaller one. There is nothing fancy about this column really, it's thick and a decent height, but not too high to increase wobble and it can have a bag or weights hooked onto the bottom of it. Then we have the fixing point from the top of the tripod to the geared head. So in the top here is a quarter to three eighths connecting head screw and these are difficult to find spares of. But last summer I actually had to pick up another one after my initial one went very rusty. I could only find them shipped in from outside the EU uh, or anywhere actually from Asia mostly to the UK. And by the way, these are a common part on many tripods and they shouldn't need to be replaced so much, but the one time I failed to clean and dry my tripod, it seemed to catch up with me. It is easy to position if a little fiddly, especially if you've got larger hands like me. But I do find, for a firm fix into the geared head, you also need to leave at least a finger's depth for the head to screw onto, or any other tripod head, that is. Now we're going to discuss the geared head, the final section of the tripod, of course. I'm going to run you through how it works, how we set it up, and each of the functions of each of the handles on here. There is things to bear in mind with this. This is a damaged um, product, so it is due to go back and get some repair works done. However, uh, I'm working on that, and uh, we're still going to discuss it, because I think it will be relevant and maybe interesting to some of you. Ideal for architectural photography, the Sunway Photo GH Pro 2 is a geared tripod head with a maximum carry capacity of 4 kilograms. Comparable with other geared heads in terms of weight, it is made from high quality materials to keep it strong and sturdy. It weighs 671 grams. The GH Pro 2 looks cool and is good to use. The gears are super smooth and whether you're turning the adjustment knobs in tiny increments or using the crank handles to make larger adjustments, fine tuning your compositions is an absolute doddle. Whatever your genre of photography, a geared head has so many advantages over other head types, with perhaps the exception of sports and wildlife where a gimbal head makes much more sense. A geared head though can help you be precise, and as precise as you want to be without the frustration creeping in that other heads can cause. My architectural and interior photography work has benefited greatly from the use of a geared head. Before this one, I had the Benro GH Pro 2. With these, I can align my camera perfectly with verticals and horizontals to avoid converging lines, of course, but also they help me to fine tune, slow down, and really kind of home in on my compositions. There are edits you can do in computer, but to get it right in camera is always the best approach. And this way, I can work more quickly and efficiently with the precision that these heads offer me. The GH Pro 2 is easy to operate using the levers and you can set the head by pulling out the levers on either of the large two buttons. By turning the knobs, you can do small geared increment movements and with the lever out, you can then do huge larger adjustments. The biggest reason for using a geared head, of course, is the actual gears as they provide a means of which you can fine tune your compositions. The gears on this model only cover two planes of adjustment, unfortunately. Uh, but are well made and designed to integrate into the design without any weird protrusions spoiling the aesthetic. Other geared heads might be less pretty, but lots of them offer geared adjustments in all three planes of axis. 
On the bottom of the G8 Pro 2 is a 3 quarter eighth screw thread which makes it possible to attach the head to almost any tripod. The head is also Arca Swiss compatible, ideal for most quick release plates and an L bracket which of course I combine this with. Okay, so the pros of this are its sleek and compact design, especially compared to my old Benro one. Smoothness and range of gearing, its range of extra little touches like the crank handles, I love those. The Arca Swiss compatibility and its central camera positioning means you can position the camera through the center of the tripod, great for architecture. But three huge cons are exposed gearing in some places means it's vulnerable to knocking and the elements. No integrated gearing on the panning plane, it's a shame it's not on all three axis. And unfortunately, Sunway Photos customer service sucks. The max load of this tripod is 14 kilograms and I really doubt you would surpass this. A maximum height is 155.5 centimeters and it's great for architecture, honestly. 135 centimeters without the center column erected. Folded it is 53 centimeters and weighs 1.54 kilograms. So light, but not super lightweight compared to the new sort of models that are hitting the market. But it is carbon, which helps. Quickly, I'm gonna move on to some essential cleaning tips for you for any tripod, actually, not just mine, but feel free to come along and clean mine if you wish. As I unscrew each of these legs, there's these little white studs at the top holding it all together. They're quite essential. They stop the leg coming out from the one above. But they do get quite clogged up with dirt, as you can see here, so I recommend giving each of them a good clean and making sure you then wipe down the legs afterwards and get all the grit out. You can also use a soft brush, like a toothbrush, in the actual screw joins as well, and then carefully place it all back together, taking care to align it all and make sure it's all in there and all the fixings are in position. Are there any negatives with this setup? Yes, there is, of course. I've had it for a long time and there's lots of pros, but there is a few things that are a bit negative, let's call it. Um, first of all, the lock legs, uh, they do tend to slip sometimes or the locks aren't done up well enough. And if I'm trying to position my camera, suddenly one leg will get shorter and you'll think, what's going on here? And you'll realize that actually it's slowly receding into itself. So whether that's user error or not, you can decide. Um, replacement parts, I've had to replace a few things. I've just replaced the feet, like I just said to you earlier in the video. I've replaced the screw thread on the top. And also as well, I've also replaced the little uh, pulley that holds onto the bottom of the center column for the bag. It tends to get rusty as well. But I mean, I think that's pretty normal after like six years of use. The Benro tripods are very similar to the Gitzo range for which I'm really familiar because I used to own a Gitzo before these legs. Gitzo seem to be recognized as perhaps the premium tripod producer, but that does come at a cost and typically a similar Benro product probably cost about half or even less than its Gitzo equivalent. I know to a certain extent you get what you pay for, but in this case I can't help but think a large part of what you're paying for is actually the name rather than any quantum leap in quality. Often very little thought seems to go into tripod selection, yet photographers happily place thousands of pounds worth of gear on flimsy tripods. I recently saw a photographer in Cappadocia with a top of the range Sony camera and a very expensive lens precariously balanced on a lightweight budget tripod. To me this is like a false economy. You're not only risking damage to your expensive gear, camera and lenses, but also you're not getting the best results from your expensive camera and lens combination. Okay, so that's pretty much my tripod from the ground up. Exciting little video, hey? I told you. Now, I've had loads of comments about this and the head in particular, what I'm using, so I thought I'd run it through on a complete video guide. There we have it. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, leave them below. I love the way that the channel has been growing in that way and you've been asking lots of questions and leaving loads of feedback. Please continue to do so. That's great feedback. I love it. And next week, we're uploading another video on Sunday. I'll see you then, of course. Until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye for now.